Bitcoin performed well, Ethereum not so much, but Solana and other layer ones have done extremely well. They've outperformed Ethereum like crazy and Ethereum's L2s. And so that's led us to this moment where everyone's like, okay, Ethereum's dead. Ethereum's dead. And so you have Peter McCormick, who's a, a known Bitcoin uh, maxi, who goes, remember ETH. And to me, and this was just yesterday, two days ago, to me, that signals a bottom. And I actually wrote that. You can see here, Elo, you didn't learn from last cycle, bottom is soon in. And the reason I say this is last year when Bitcoin was skyrocketing, or sorry, last cycle, when Bitcoin was skyrocketing, ETH was delayed, as I just showed in that image, everyone had this, they had an actual ETH, to ETH death party uh, on Twitter. It was a Twitter spaces. And a bunch of maxis came on, celebrated, and that marked the exact bottom of the ETH BTC. And then ETH just took off and completely blew apart Bitcoin, literally the day after they had that, which is really funny. And this again goes on to the sentiment. When everyone's calling something dead, that usually means people are on the sidelines of that asset. And when, as long as it has fundamentals, then all of a sudden this thing will rip faster than everyone imagines. And so when you see this remember ETH and everyone on Twitter right now is saying ETH is dead, ETH is this old tech, Solana is so much better, blah, 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 blah. This is your sign of, okay, now is the time. And by the way, and I also have tons of people in our Discord saying, should I be selling my ETH for Solana? Solana just pumped 800%. ETH has still not had its move, even though fundamentally it is the strongest asset in this entire space. It's the only sustainable, profitable tokenomic structure in this space. And yet everyone's saying this thing's going to die. There are thousands of, tens of thousands of developers, thousands of companies, private, no, uh, public, uh, non-crypto, crypto native. There are hundreds of thousands of investors, tens of thousands of validators, all incentivized for Ethereum to do well. Do you really think this thing's going to die? There's a 0% chance it dies because it has Lindy and network effects. I talk about this all the time. But when you have this many people that rely on it and are incentivized for it, they're going to ship products. They are going to do things to make this thing come back from its death, just like what happened to Solana and what always happens with the crypto industry every single cycle. And so when I look at, first of all, I want to just explain why I think ETH has been lagging so much. Other than the flow part, it should have probably done better. But the reason, and this is what I'm, I believe, is that Celsius, if you remember, is one of the lending platforms that went bankrupt last year. They have a bunch of ETH and they have an opportunity. They've been allowed, given approval to continue their Bitcoin mining operations to earn revenue, even in bankruptcy. And so what they're doing is in order to facilitate buying enough mining equipment and other things, this new business opportunity they have, they need $250 million in cash to do this. And they happen to have that in ETH. And so over the last 30 to 45 days since November, which is the time that ETH has been lagging so much, they have been selling eight to 10,000 ETH every single day. And it's still happening today. And in fact, they have sold, and this was in their, their filings as of December 19th, they had sold over 30 days, $243 million, okay, in ETH specifically. Now they sold some other stuff, stable coins, Link, Matic, AVAX, but small, small, small amounts. AVAX is 150,000. Who cares? Doesn't make a difference. But when you're selling $250 million of an asset over 30 days, that's huge. That would generally tank any other asset. But if the Ethereum not only held on, it actually continued to rise. Now it was a small amount, right? It, again, it lagged everything else, but it continued to rise. So when Celsius is done selling, and I'm not sure if that's today or not, I've been trying to figure that out. I don't know yet, but I know it's coming soon. The last report I saw was if they sold all their ETH, which we don't know if they're going to do that, but if they sold it all, it would be done by January 14th if they continue on this trend of eight to 10,000 uh, ETH per day. And so either it's done now because they have enough to pay for their the business they were running or it finishes January 14th. Regardless, when that selling pressure is gone from Ethereum, there's just no way that this, as long as demand remains the same, that this asset doesn't just skyrocket. And so also the fact that you have so many people that just rotated out of Ethereum and into Solana and bought the tops of Solana, the local tops. I think Solana still has ways to go. But you have a bunch of people that are sidelined on ETH. They're not buying it right now because it's lagging. You got a bunch of people that have been selling it because they think they're missing the pump elsewhere. These are the moments when something is so hated. These are the moments where you want to dive further into it and you want to buy. Just like I called with Solana before and the crypto industry previous to that, I think the same setup is happening on Ethereum. And so I think that's where we're at. And then in terms of catalysts, when we think of fundamentals outside of, of course, 
Ethereum has all the, the tokenomic fundamentals. But I really want people to understand is that there's the Ethereum fundamentals and then there's layer twos, which have also been completely shit on in the last few months. Everyone again is saying layer twos are useless. It's all about layer ones. And all the, I mean, if you look at AVAX, Sol, Near, they've all done so well, whereas layer twos have not. And the one catalyst that I see that's coming also early next year, apart from the ETH ETF, which is so obvious, you're not getting an ETF in any of the other smaller assets. Uh, and so apart from that spot ETF coming, which is likely to be approved in May, we just had the announcement that EIP4844, which is the upgrade to Ethereum that will lower the fees to L2 specifically for data. And so the gas fees to L for L2s are going to be lowered by an order of magnitude. And so if gas fees right now are 10 cents, uh, they'll go down to you know one cent or lower. If they're 20 cents, they'll go down to two cents. So not as cheap as Solana still, but very, very negligible in terms of it being just one cent to transact across all L2s. Now, some are even cheaper than that. Some L2s are already at one cent, which means they'll go to 0.1 cent, right? So we're talking a massive, massive upgrade to Ethereum L2s. And so not only do I think Ethereum, the most hated asset right now, does really, really well in Q1, I also think that layer twos are set up to just absolutely explode and woke up this morning as I go to record this and this, I think the market might already be smelling this out. I mean, optimism is already up 30% today. Uh, our arbitrum is up 21%. Now, I wasn't expecting that as I recorded this, but hey, I guess I, I, I need to be quicker next time. But there's still plenty of room to run. And the reason I say that is if you look at the market cap of optimism and arbitrum, and remember, these are in, in direct um, competition to something like Solana and AVAX, right? You could think of these as the competition to L1s. And so, but Optimus and Archim have more liquidity. Uh, both of them have more liquidity than something like Solana and AVAX. They have similar users. They probably have more developers and more uh, apps, maybe not than Solana, but close. They're very comparable. They at least have a lot more liquidity. And so the market caps of these though, if you look at the fully diluted market caps, of Optimus and Archim, 12 uh, billion, sorry, 12.7 billion and 13 billion between the two. Okay. If we go to Solana, Solana's market cap currently 52 fully diluted, 52 billion, and AVAX uh, 19 billion. And so Avalanche isn't even close to as successful as arbitrage optimism for users, transactions, like all the things. It's nowhere even remotely close. So, in my opinion, Optimus and Archim should be uh, actually higher in market cap than AVAX. Now, will it? I'm not sure, but they should be higher. And so I think that even by the end of December, we are going to see a massive run in LT tokens and in Ethereum. Uh, and so that's where I think we're at in markets right now, at least for 2023. Now, of course, moving into 2024, I've got a whole different scenario. So tune in next week. I'm going to dive into what I think is going to happen in markets uh, next uh, next year for 2024. Um, I'll talk again about macro. I'll talk about specific tokens and in the crypto market at large, a little teaser. I'm very, very bullish going into next year for many, many reasons. So I'll cover all of that. But regardless, one just tip, because I noticed this throughout the year so far, is you want to do the least amount of trades as possible, right? You want to be early in a trade, early in an investment, which is why we signaled at the beginning of the year, getting crypto, even if it's still a bit early, get in now. It's why we said Solana early, early, early on when it was dead. You want to get into those and just hold them. You don't want to be chasing pumps. And so right now, everyone has you know, wants to be selling their ETH and going into Solana. And I think that, or selling their L2 tokens going into Solana. And I think that that's not the play. The play is set your bags early on. You should have already had Solana. You should have already had Ethereum. You should already have L2 tokens. We have been addressing this and writing pro reports on this since early, early days this, this year. Uh, and you want to just buy those and hold them. You don't want to be swapping from one tokens to another. Not only does this cause tax implications, but generally you're going to screw it up. And that's the big problem. So I don't trade much and I won't trade much for this entire couple of years. You want to set your bags early. Now, if you have new cash, new fiat, then buy these tokens, but don't sell your other tokens as long as you have conviction in them. Something like Ethereum, it's crazy to sell that into something else when it becomes the most hated. That's the time you want to be actually buying more or just holding on if you already have some.